Hello everyone, my name is S Comic Maker, and today, as the title suggests, we'll be creating some villain characters. <laughs> yeah, right. You and villains? All you ever draw is cute stuff? Or weirdly funny curse stuff for some reason? I still can't figure out what that's all about. Well, Banana Man, let's see how twisted I can get. Let's get dark. <laughs> So how this all started was the lovely artist Perry Pictures reached out to me and asked if I would like to work on a collab with her where we randomly get generated a plot and then create characters based off that story. And if you're new here, I gotta tell you, I love random generator stuff. It takes a lot of guesswork away when coming up with what to draw and honestly, it's just a lot of fun. I'll read you the story in just a little bit, but essentially Perry and I decided that for the story that we had, we were going to split the villains and heroes and make four of each of them. Perry took on the heroes and by now you know I decided to tackle the villains. I'm honestly not that good at creating dark stories and villains aren't something I typically gravitate towards so I was totally ready for the challenge. So while I start telling you the story and my thoughts behind the characters I created, I'll be starting some of the sketches in the background here. You'll see me jump between all four of the characters while I talk about the story but then in the end I will be drawing a final version of them all together. The story is a perfect perfect mix of weird and random, so let's get into that. An alien invasion has destroyed the world as we know it. The year is 2090. Canada is a deserted place ruled by zombies, of course. Once glorious, the Grand Canyon is now possessed. Helpful author Dr. Nadine Jolie is humanity's only hope. Nadine finds the courage to start a secret revolutionary organization called the Four Forks. The fight is jeopardized when Nadine is tricked by arrogant lawyer Professor Sir Hector Cockle and injures her elbow. Ooh, how serious. Armed with nets and brains, the four forks try their best to save mankind. But can they defeat predatory zombies and restore the Grand Canyon to its former glory? Bam, bam, bam. Sounded super interesting. You know, with Canada being deserted and also the setting is the Grand Canyon. In fact, how far is the Grand Canyon from Canada. Hmm, makes sense to me. Anyway, the only for sure character I had from this was the lawyer character, Professor Hector Cockle, and I decided that for the story, he works as a lawyer and teaches part-time at a university in order to make this professor title make sense. But it ended up working out with what I came up with for the story. For my four villains, I ended up with the lawyer, a scientist, and two zombie characters. So let me get out my notes and paint you a little picture. Hector spent most of his life as the underdog. He was smart, but not popular or athletic or good at speaking in social situations. Growing up, he was constantly bullied by a neighborhood boy named Ray Monger. Ray was the exact opposite of Hector, and while he wasn't very smart, he charmed his way through life and made everyone laugh. A lot of the time, though, Hector was the butt of his jokes, and Hector spent years of his life festering on what he would do with his life and how he would beat Ray one day. Once he was able to, he went to college, learned how to speak elegantly in front of others, and even toned his body in order to surpass everyone who looked down on him. His logic was, as long as I have money and my mind, I can make the rest fall into place. And for a long time it worked. Success brought hollow relationships and lots of money for Hector. He even started public speaking about confidence and life skills to universities to boost his ego, and that's where he landed a part-time gig as a professor. Having students whose outcome he controlled really tickled his ego. But the university he was working partly at had an incredible science department that was in charge of all kinds of funded programs for medicine and pharmaceuticals. In that department, there were two scientists, Dr. Marshall A. H. Higginbottom and Dr. Louise Monroe, a pair in charge of a department that was studying the reanimation of dying and decaying tissue. They were running multiple experiments, reanimating cells or combining dead and living tissues to see if they could get deceased muscles moving again. They had some success, but besides moving, the limbs didn't do much since their dead brains couldn't give commands. The two scientists came under fire for using deceased bodies without the permission of their families. Being intrigued by the story and their experiments, 
Athens, Hector decided to represent them, and through his cunning, he was able to win the case, and was talked about in legal circles all around for being able to pull off that win. Being on cloud nine from the experience and feeling like he was finally on top in his life, he went on for a drink only to come across Ray, his bully from his childhood. While Hector had hoped Ray would have peaked in high school, he unfortunately came to find through chatting with him that night that Ray was happy, incredibly healthy and successful, married to a beautiful wife with two children. He was running a successful fitness business and had a decent following online and made some good money doing it. Worst of all, he was excited to see Hector because he wanted to apologize to him for all he had done and wished that he could take back what he said to him as a kid. He explained how he was going through rough times as a child and took it out on Hector. That night, Hector left the bar angrier than he had ever felt. How else could he top someone who had everything, and why did he get to have such a great life after causing him so much turmoil? But that night, the world had other plans, because an alien invasion rocked the planet and changed life as everyone knew it. But before that takes off, let's backtrack for a second to our scientists. As we already know, both Dr. Eloise and Dr. Marshall are working on reanimating tissues in their lab. While the two were hired to work on the project together, Dr. Marshall treats Eloise more like an assistant than a peer. Marshall is a tall, proud man and definitely feels that his experience and age make him much more qualified than Eloise at basically everything. He constantly yells at her to think or use her head, when a lot of times the little errors that they come across in their researcher from Dr. Marshall himself. But after delegating tasks to Eloise despite her protests or questions of incorrect measurements or numbers, Dr. Marshall doesn't listen and blames Eloise when things go wrong. Eloise is small and timid, being under 5 foot tall despite being 24 years old. She looks much younger and worked really hard to be taken serious in her field. After working with Dr. Marshall for years, she bottles up her anger until it bursts one day in front of Dr. Marshall and Hector while they were in a meeting before their court case. It's in this moment that Hector becomes aware of who the actual brains behind the operation is in the labs. If it weren't for Eloise's quick thinking and memory, their experience would have been shut down a long time ago. Hector remembers this once the aliens invade and a zombie outbreak happens. The best time to gain power, in his opinion, is among chaos. So once things go south, Hector seeks out Eloise to offer to fund her experiments in exchange for helping him survive. But when he finds Eloise, he finds that she is snapped and is standing manic over the animated and functioning but very dead Dr. Marshall. Right before the invasion happened, Eloise made a breakthrough in her experiments on dead tissue and went to submit it for review. They were both praised for their discoveries though, because in the end, Dr. Marshall took credit for all of the work. It was then that Eloise realized that she didn't need Dr. Marshall to be successful and that all those times he put her down and told her to think that she was actually better than him. During the invasion, the college campus was swarming with undead and a couple had made their way into the science facilities where both of them worked. Eloise could have easily saved Dr. Marshall and pressed the emergency lock button to one of the doors that separated them, but as the zombies came running down the corridor, Dr. Marshall yelled at Eloise to press the button. Come on! Think! She had initially panicked when seeing them approach, but hearing him yell at her again in that moment, her hand hovered over the button before letting go, and she locked herself in the office next to it instead. Eloise could hear Dr. Marshall scream in the other room, and only left when she heard nothing at all. Since then, she experimented with his body as it would be such a waste of a good assistant. And finally, with free reign of the facilities, she crafted Dr. Marshall into the perfect assistant, capable of listening and recording data like a human computer. She named him Think. When Hector found Eloise, he knew that she would be the perfect person to help them survive, and knowing that she had the knowledge to make use of corpses that could act as a layer of protection for them was absolutely perfect. Hector worked with Eloise to invade one of the alien ships and steal tech in order to help create other functioning minions to aid them in the survival of the new world and take power among the chaos, including a new pet, Ray, that he used as the muscle of their operation since he was an unfortunate casual of the invasion. Hector is content with his newfound power until he meets Nadine, who could easily cause a problem in his plans. He tries to trick her into a friendship, which results in her being injured. The outcome of their stories is undecided in the versus battle of the future, but as you can see, I had so much fun coming up with the story. In the end, I drew all the characters together with the Grand Canyon in the background facing the heroes in an epic conclusion. Like I said, I'm not used to making villains, so let me know 
know what you thought of mine in the comments. And speaking of heroes, special thank you to Perry again for working on a collab with me. She worked on Nadine and the rest of the heroes over on her channel, but you know what? I'll let her tell you herself. Hi everyone, my name is Antonia. I go by Perry Pictures on YouTube and over on my channel, I worked on the heroes version of this story. So if you wanna see how those turned out, make sure to pop on over and check out my video right after you finish watching Amanda's. Thank you for having me and I'll see you there. Thank you, Perry. Well, you heard her. Perry's got the rest of the story over on her channel. So be sure to check out the link in the iCard and credits or description to be taken over to her channel and check out her amazing work. But that's it for me, guys. Thank you, as always, to my wonderful banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye, guys.